Galilee. Now, Galilee's his hometown, man. He was, he was from Galilee. He found Philip. <laughs> Jesus is leading the way, man. He found Philip and he said to him, come, follow me. Some of you are, are struggling with where to give your hearts and lives to Christ because you don't understand what the Christian life is about. If I summed it up in two words, it's this, follow me. That's it. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus and you figure out the rest as you go. That, I mean, that's the only way. If I summed it up in one word, it's surrender. It's just say, God, I, I can't do it on my own. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't surrender some things because that's what we try to do. I have to surrender everything. So he looks at Philip and he says, come follow me. And then Philip went to look for who? Are we on the same? Are we? Yeah, Nathaniel. I'm making sure you're with me again, man. Come on, church. We got stuff to cover. Philip went to look for who? Now, Nathaniel was guess who, what his relationship was to Philip? His brother. What do you think about that? I mean, Andrew went and found his brother. Philip went and found it. This is how the early church got started. Man, we can learn a lot from the early church. So Philip went to look for Nathaniel. He told him, we found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. Dude, we found him. This is awesome. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. And he blew it right there. Which tells me you don't have to know very much. Because Galileans were southern Jerusalem Israelite rednecks. I live in Madison County, so I can say that. You people that are from Oconee, you cannot say that. And you people that are from Clark County, you cannot say that. I, I live in Madison County, so I can say that. They were southern rednecks. And so here's what, here's what Philip or um, Nathaniel says, Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I mean, no way. I mean, this dude can't come out of Nazareth. And, 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 and don't miss this part. This is it. Just say this, these, these next few words with me. What does he say to him? One more time. That's it. That's how. How am I friending? Come and see for yourself. That's all God's asked us to do. Church, I, man, it took me a long time. I, I, I led some worship, and, and, and that was awesome. But, man, when I became a pastor, it's like, oh, dang, I'm responsible now. Matt should have been here for that one. No. But, <laughs> I mean, you know, because worship leaders, man, we can do anything, and it doesn't matter. And, I mean, it just kind of happens. But, man, when you're the pastor, you feel responsible. And, and you know what I really felt responsible for is the invitation. Oh, man, somebody's going to go to heaven or go to hell because of what I say. God had to slap the fool out of me on that one. I have nothing to do with it. You have nothing to do with saving anybody. Nothing. It only happens through Jesus Christ. And see, Andrew figured that out. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Philip screwed it up. He's from Nazareth, man. I mean, who wants to follow anybody from Nazareth? He said, come and see this for yourself, man. I love people. You love skeptics? I, I love skeptics. And I know some of you don't, man. You want to argue with them. God didn't call you to argue with them. God called you to love them. And I, I love skeptics, I mean, because they're honest. Church people aren't honest. How you doing today? Man, I'm doing good. Right? Jesus is on the throne. I mean, my, my, my soul has been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm redeemed by the power of God. It couldn't be any better. And you just cussed your wife out before you came to church. That's church people. Skeptics, how you doing today? My life sucks. <laughs> right on, bro. We can talk now. You know, I mean, Nathaniel, I'd love that answer. Just come and see for yourself. That was Philip's approach to impacting the social network. Can we do that? Can we do that with the, I mean, you're like, Pastor, will you pray for me? I'm the only person in my workplace that knows Jesus. Do you know how tough that is? Praise God! That's why you're there, to be a light. Man, students, the government makes you go to a school that needs the light of Jesus shined in it? <laughs> Praise God! Maybe God's got you there in that position, that person you work with, that person that, you know, is, is um, in, in, in your apartment complex, that next door neighbor, that classmate, you know, that coworker, that, that friend or, that, you know, Uncle Larry that we hate at the family reunion that's just weird. Maybe God puts you there because they need Jesus. You don't have to stand up there with the track and a costume and, man, if you, if you ever pray the sinner's prayer, you know, if you die tonight, do you know if you go to heaven, Uncle Larry? Man, that's, I, I, I'm very, you know what, everybody who's own and some people that works for, that has never worked for me. 
That has just like been the opposite of what's worked for me. If it works for you, man, keep on going. But it does not work for me. It just, it's out of a relationship. It's out of your social network. It's out of you being Jesus and being that and saying, you know what? God's changed my life. Come and see that. I can't answer all your questions, but why don't you come? You are. Do you know this is why we do church the way we do church? And church, I just, we, we have, there's a part of us that is really, really good at this. And then there's a part of us that doesn't do very good at it. And I mean, that's hard, you know, I don't like to get in your face and all that kind of stuff. I like Jesus to get in your face, but right now this is your pastor getting in your face a little bit. There's some of us that we've never brought anybody to church with us. Man, I, I don't know what, I don't, I don't know if there's a formula or anything, but man, if, 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 if you're not investing in people and, and inviting them on a regular basis and seeing somebody come with you, man, you got to check the pulse rate, right? This isn't cheesecake, this isn't your favorite movie. This is a God that can fix their marriage. This is a God that can change their world. This is God that can free them from their addiction. This is a God that can take the old things and make it new. This is a God that can take that marriage and make it the last marriage that they get into. This is a God that can take a single or a college student man that is just searching in this world and give them a purpose for life and do something great with them. We can't be quiet about that. We gotta tell somebody. And if we're not, then we gotta check our pulse rate. Who am I friending? God has called you to impact your social network. How am I friending? Man, come and see. Man, do you know what? The problem, we get in so many debates, and don't debate with this culture. Why? The problem isn't what people believe about politics, whether they're right or left-wing or conservative or not liberal. I mean, that's not the problem. The problem isn't what people believe about marriage. The problem isn't what people believe, oh man, if your kids don't go to this kind of school or that, I mean, that's not the problem. The problem is they don't know Jesus. And if we will go get them and bring them to a place where they can come and meet Jesus, then he can rock their world. Does that make sense? That's it, that's it, that's as simple as it is. All right, let's get out the Three Musketeer bars. Everybody get one? I like to throw stuff from the stage. We've got good insurance here. Everybody get one of these? You better, well, you better wake up. Somebody better wake up. I'm going to hit somebody. i got to keep one for me. All right, here we go. There's the next one. Man, do not get that out and do not eat that, okay? This, this is really important because this is the thing. You know, some of you think that Three Musketeer bars, what is that? Have you, anybody like Three Musketeer bars? Yeah, man, these things rock. You can eat this in a little while. I'll let you eat it. That's okay. You're going to have to keep the wrapper. I really believe that this candy bar <laughs> represents, what it represents is some exponential potential for us as a church. And let, 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 me, let me explain it to you um, this way. <clears throat> we believe that God is calling each one of you to impact a social network in your life. It's one of the reasons that we're doing this series. I, I, I've already, I've talked about that. God has put certain people around you in your life and he wants you to use you to bring them to him. And a lot of us can relate to those stories that I shared earlier. Why? Because we came because of an invitation. Somebody cared enough about us. For most all of us, that's our Christ-following story. Somebody cared enough about us to make an invitation in our life. So what I want you to think about is who are your three people in your social network that God can use to impact this coming year? Okay? Look at the person next to you and say, who's your three? <clears throat> and then after you ask them that, say, God's got three people for you to impact. Just tell them that. You guys got to believe this stuff. That's why I got to put this on your lips. Because some of you look at me like I'm an alien. <laughs> I'm not an alien. I might look like one, but I'm not an alien, okay? So this is how that's going to happen. You know, <clears throat> I checked out within driving distance of our church. And some of you make the driving distance pretty incredible. We have people that drive from Greensboro. We have people that drive from, man, up in Emmanuel College in Franklin Springs. We have people that drive to church farther than most of us would even think about going to church to come to this place. Because a church alive is worth the drive. And thank you. I mean, I'm blown away when I see somebody drive. But <clears throat> within a driving radius of our church, northeast Georgia, about a 45-minute radius, there are approximately, according to statistics, about 176,000 people that don't have a growing, rooted, strong relationship with Jesus Christ. And <clears throat> when I see that stat, church, I don't want, I don't, I don't, on my watch, man, I don't want that to happen. And I want us to have a heart for people. People matter. 
That, you know, people we uncommonly accept, we unconditionally love, we unselfishly involve, uncommonly accept. One of the things that I get from our first time guests all the time is how accepting you guys are. Man, I felt welcome there. Host team, first impressions team, what, you guys are all, parking lot team greeters, man, ushers, you guys rock. You guys are awesome, man. You do a great job. Man, some of you, come on, let's give it up for these guys. Man, they get out there in the cold, they get out there in the rain. They're like the postman, you know, like the postman man or the postwoman, you know, the mail delivers rain, sleet, or snow. They're out there. They're welcoming. They're friendly. I mean, you can come in with a big old scowl on your face and you meet some of our greeters and you just can't, you have to be happy when you walk in this place. It doesn't matter how you feel, man. And that's awesome. And, and man, we, we want people to, to sense that and to feel that. We want to uncommonly accept when they come here. But there's 160, 76,000 people approximately in, in our area that don't know them. Now, here's the deal. If, if each of us, approximately 500 of us, will each take our three. You guys, and, and I remember the movie three. You guys remember the movie? You guys, you guys know the names of the three musketeers? <clears throat> Aramis. Yes, there were three, okay? D'Artagnan was not one of the three musketeers. Watch Slumdog Millionaire, okay? You'll get the answer at the end of it. He was like, man, who, who is the fourth musketeer, man? He won a million dollars because he knew that D'Artagnan was the fourth musketeer. Love that, man. But here we go. If we'll just, if we'll take, if we'll be D'Artagnan, okay, and we'll find our three musketeers this next year, 500 of us doing that, how many people would that be? That would be 1,500 people. You see that? This is exponential. If all, if, if, if 500 of us said, you know what, I'm going to invite three people to come and see and come in to see what Jesus wants to do in their life and to come into this place. That's all I got to do. I'm just going to invite them to come and see and bring them here with me on a particular Sunday and let God do the work in their life. That would be 1,500. Counting us 500, that would be 2,000. If we all went out next year and did that, that would be 6,000. If we went out the year after that and did that, that would be 18,000. If we all went out the year after that and did that, that would be 54,000. And in year five, that would be right around the 160,000 mark. I'm not a great mathematician, but we're really close. And in years five and six, you know what happens after that? We go exponential, and it moves beyond that just if we will take a three musketeer bar and say, God, will you allow me to impact three people in my social network this year? There are empty seats besides some of you in this 930 service. That's not for elbow movie theater room and for your coat. That is for somebody. The church, you know, and we, we made a decision, man, we're 80% full, we're full because people like some of that little elbow room. We're not full in this particular service yet. Now, our second service is, is, is pretty full. That, that, that happens there. But you know what, man? God's called some of you that come to the 930 service. He's called some of you to go out there and to impact your social network. And church, that's what God's called us to do. The stakes are high. People matter. Who is it that God is calling you to impact? That's a... Um, that's a life-changing social network. Now, let me wrap here with the, the, the third question. How am I friending, or uh, who am I friending, how am I friending, and in the last part, why um, am I friending? I have, um, and, and if you're around me much, you know, I've got a group of people in my life that, man, I, I want to see them come to Jesus so bad. I've got people that I have prayed for for years. Invite them every Christmas, invite them every Easter. Sometimes they show up, sometimes they don't. I mean, man, and I, man, I am bound. And, and, and these, aren't, these aren't people and Aunt Sally and Cousin Mary and, and all that over in California, wherever I don't know them, man. These are people right here that could show up on a Sunday. And I remember one Sunday, five people that I've been praying for showed up just randomly on a Sunday. And man, it just changed everything. It changed everything. I mean I, I mean, I wanted, I mean, I wanted everything to be working right that Sunday when I saw some of them come walking in because, God, I want you to do something in their life. I want you to rock their world. And I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and one of the guys that I've been praying for for years, and God allows our paths to connect all the time. And, man, I saw him yesterday. I probably talked to him three or four times a week. Um, I, he, he's come like three or four different times, and, and God's at work in his life. And I just tell you these stories because, I mean, I know some of you get frustrated with some of the people that you try to invite. And I called him up the other day, and, and I said, hey, man, I think... I think I'm using one of your stories as an open illustration. And he was actually one of the dudes that did the standing and squatting thing with my kids. And so he was the pregame speech coach that did that. And he said, man, he says, don't tell them that. And I said, no, I got to tell them that. And he says, well, he says, I'm that guy. He says, they don't want me in hell. <laughs> and he says, and they won't accept me in heaven. And I just looked at him and I said, that's because you're Catholic, bro. That's what purgatory is. You mixed up. 